I'm going to show you why you do not have to spend $150 on a tire pressure gauge. The cheaper ones will work just as well. Okay, the expensive one, it is from Long Acre Racing Products. Comes in a nice case. I did not buy it, it was gift to me as a gift. We'll start with the Long Acre. Got a really nice swivel pin on it. It will release air under pressure. Let's turn it on. And it does read in tenths, not halves. Most of these read in point fives. I believe this is tenth, we'll find out. This is point fives, as is the MVP. And this one, uh, the batteries, it does have a battery gauge or has a low battery indicator up there on the upper right. And it does take two triple A's, the same as the Jayco unit. It is backlit also. It is supposed to be a standard for racing tire pressure gauges where the engineers on the race cars, they want to write down to the tenth. This guy was bought in Napa in 2002, so he's 19 years old. He takes a 2032 battery, and I think I changed it only one time. This has really good accuracy, whether you're reading a 30-pound tire or an 80-pound tire. It auto-offs very quick. This is also one of my old standbys made in USA, Blue Point, purchased right off the Snap-on truck in the late 1970s, possibly mid-1970s. It's been a good one. And we'll go to the MVP. He's probably close to 15 to 18 years old. Batteries get a little weak, but it still works. Fairly accurate. But you'll notice his reading is from 2 to 60 PSI. What I like about the Jayco is we pull an RV trailer and we pull the truck. The truck is 80 PSI and I'm running 90 PSI in the trailer tires. They're 110 PSI tires, so I run 90 in them. It is also backlit, battery gauge, two AAA. This is probably the cheapest one. Like I say, the, the Long Acre was 150. This was probably 19 years ago, around 30 bucks at Napa. Been a very good unit. I'm really impressed with this one. I don't think you could buy it like this anymore. This gauge was made in Taiwan, which is fairly unusual, but it was 19 years ago. This one is made in China. Like I say, he's not that old, maybe 15, 18 years old. Pretty good gauge though. This one is handy. It is substantial. I can bleed air with it. You can on the, of course, the $150 Long Acre. You can too. Your pressure release is clear up here. We're here to run on. And this is a swivel also. Pretty nice. It does not leak air. So let's go outside and do an accuracy check on all five of them and we'll just kind of compare them. You got to bear in mind though, they're all going to read something different. And when you get in your car and you drive two miles down the road, the pressure already has increased probably one or two pounds, depending on the temperatures, depending on where you live. So do you really have to have it just absolutely perfect at all time? It's not going to stay there. So in a nutshell, what you'll run into is the more accuracy you desire, the more you're going to pay for the gauge. And two, if you're running or if you're ever checking air in a bicycle tire, you're going to have to get up there to possibly 150 PSI gauge, even exceeding gauges like this. And this is from zero to 100 also. So the zero to 100 PSI typically will run you a little bit more, maybe just a few dollars, maybe five to $10 more than a gauge that tops out at say 50 or 60 PSI. So if you do not need a gauge to exceed 50 PSI or 60. There's no sense in buying it. I've also found that the lower range gauges are more accurate because they have a tighter air pressure range that they're only concerned with. Say from uh, 2 PSI to 50 or 2 to 60. They can calibrate it a little bit tighter than one going from 0 to 100. I suppose it's the same on a 0 to 150. I've never had a digital gauge that reads as high as 150. Also, I don't think I mentioned that uh, this particular model of Long Acre Tops out at 60 PSI. This is a 32 PSI tire. That's where it wants to be normally, but temperatures have dropped about 20 degrees, so we're gonna be substantially lower. Let's see where we're at with the Long Acre first. It did not hold it. That surprises me. And I don't see a hold function on it, so let's do it again. 25.3. 25.3. Write that down. Let's try this. It's probably 45 years old. It's probably a Bordon tube inside. Just a little copper tube or some kind of material. And as air pressure hits it, it deflects and it moves a little gear train and moves the needle. Now that's hard to read because of the angle. I'm going to say 26. This is definitely 19 years old. I bought it in 02 when I bought a brand new 02 Dodge Cummins because the 80 PSI tires on it. 25 even. And it holds it. 
It does something that a $150 gauge will not do. It holds it. Pretty impressive. 25 MVP. Only reads 2 to 60. We're right in the middle of that. We should be good. 25 even. Another impressive tar gauge for the money. Probably I gave 10 bucks for it. The J. Cole. I like this gauge. All brass construction up here. Pretty nice. Pretty nice gauge. It is a $25 gauge though. It's not cheap. Okay, let's see what we got. I can't remember if it holds or not. Not bad. 24.6 and it holds it. Now we'll go inside and draw up a chart. See how just how close they all are. You probably heard a little bit of air leaking every time we put a gauge on and took it off. And we just went through five gauges, so we probably could have easily lost a half a pound of air there. That's just something to be conscious of when you're checking air. Get it on fast, get it off fast. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask in the comment section. Thanks for watching and have a good one.